Welcome back to our series on introductory statistics. I'm Mark Ledbetter and this is lecture video number 13. So L13. Last time we talked about percentiles and we said that if you had say the 78th percentile then 78 percent of the values would be below that value. We talked about quartiles, the first, second, and third quartiles, and we said that those were the 25th percentile, the 50th percentile, which is also the median, and the 75th percentile. We also learned how to get the quartiles, and so the 50th percentile, we start there, Q2, and uh, yeah, so the second quartile, and w that's the median. Then we take all the values below that second quartile or median, but not including it. And we find the median of those values, and that's the first quartile. Then we take all the values above the median of uh, Q2, above that uh, second quartile, but not including it. And those upper values, we find the median of those, and that's the third quartile, Q3. And then we put together the minimum or lowest value, the quartiles, and the maximum or highest value of the data, and that gives us a five number summary. And we said that we're going to do that for uh, plotting. So a box and whisker plot, uh, so this time we're going to talk about box and whisker plots and we're going to use those to determine the shape of the distribution. So a box, can, box and whisker plot, or box plot, how most people say it, is a very useful t technique from explanatory data, or exploratory data, not explanatory, uh, that's used for describing the data and the shape of the data. Okay, so we can explore the shape of the data using this. So what's the procedure? First, we're going to draw a scale, a horizontal scale. Now you can do this horizontally or vertically. The book has the vertical information, so I did the information for the horizontal scale. And I personally like the horizontal scale better. I'll show you why, but both are correct, okay? So you draw a, a horizontal scale Above the scale, you're going to draw the box from Q1 to Q3. And the height of the box can vary, so you just make it what looks nice, okay, for you. Then you're going to draw a solid vertical line straight up and down from the top to the bottom of the box at the value of Q2. Then we're going to draw horizontal lines or whiskers from the left end of the box, which is Q1, out to the lowest or minimum value. And then, um, uh, let's see, the minimum value. And, and we're going to do those line, draw those lines uh, near the middle of the box. So if we have a box, we're going to try to draw a line like this, let's say. And then we're going to do the same thing from the other side. We're going to go from Q3, the top of the box, up to the maximum value. And again, we're going to place that line uh, vertically in the middle of the box, okay? So we don't put it down here or up here or anything like that, okay? Okay. So let's go ahead and do this for our example from last time. And this was the vanilla fr flavored ice cream bars. And um, I don't think I mentioned that last time, but um, that's what it is. And so we have... Um, 111 is our minimum value. So I have drawn a scale here, and you make it easy for yourself, um, but I'm trying to keep it a little bit to scale. So the first thing, this is the min, this is the max, this is Q1, Q2, Q3. The box is going to be from Q1 to Q3, so I need about 182, and if this is 125 here, then let's say this is about um, 182 and we'll just label it 182 so there's no doubt and then we need uh, this will be 375 then we need about 319 uh, so we'll say that that is uh, say here okay and we'll make this a box, try to make it look kind of like a box. Okay. And then we're going to draw all the, and this is going to be Q, so that was not Q1. I mislabeled that. Sorry, that was Q, this is Q1, not Q, not Q2. 
So this is Q1, this is Q3, and uh, Q3 is 319. And then we need Q2, so that's around 221. I'm going to say that that is about here. So this will be Q2 and 221.5. And let's see. Yes, okay, so this is going to be representative. I'm looking at the distance between this value and this value, and then this value and this value. And the distance from 221.5 to 182 is uh, 39.5, and the distance from 221 to 319 is what, 98.5? So, um, 97.5, sorry. And so it's much closer to Q1. Q2 is much closer to Q1 than it is Q3. So then we need 111. I'm going to say that that is about here. And then we need uh, 439. I'm going to say that that is about here. 439. And we usually put a straight up line there. But you don't have to. I don't think the book does, actually. And then we'll label this 111. Okay. I'm going to clean this up a little bit so that um, we have our values a little nicer. So 182, 221.5, 319. And now we're going to be able to look at this and, and see the shape of the data. So let's talk about that. All right. So let's first talk about a symmetric distribution. For a symmetric distribution, Q2, which is that middle line, Remember that this is Q1, this is Q2, and this is Q3. That Q2 you see in this picture looks like it's right in the middle of the data. And then here, this would be Q3, Q2. I'm going to write that on the other side so I have room for what I'm going to do later. Q3, Q2, Q1. So remember that we go up in this direction. We go up in value as we go in that direction. And so, if it's symmetric, I'm going to draw something that looks like a bell shape. Nice and symmetric. I, I'm a poor artist, so pretend like this is a nice uh, symmetric distribution there. Okay. Now, what we're doing is, the reason I like it horizontal is because skew to the left means the left box is bigger. Okay. If it's vertical, it's going to be the side that's to the smallest value, so it's going to be the bottom that's uh, bigger. So that's why I prefer the horizontal, personally. Um, and here, this is going to be skewed to the left, so let me draw something that looks skewed to the left. And we'll do it up here, too, so we'll go up pretty fast and down pretty slow. I want to caution you that you do not look at the lines at all. You only look at the box to determine um, which side is skewed or symmetric, if it's symmetric. Okay? And then skewed to the right is going to be um, the opposite. So we're going to go up pretty fast, slow down. We're going to go up pretty fast and then slow down. So that is skewed to the right, and the box, if you're horizontal, the box to the right is bigger. Okay? What's the shape of the box that we did back in example four just a minute ago? Well, let's look at that. It's going to be the, the side that's bigger is the side to the right. So this is skewed whoops, to the right. So this is going to be, we had a box that looks something like that, and so it's going to be skewed to the right. Okay, that's it for this section and this chapter. I hope this has been helpful. Remember to scan in your lecture notes and uh, into your Google Drive folder that's saved uh, or that's shared with you for this class before midnight 
of the date that's listed on the course calendar. That's the due date. Um, make them neat for you because you're the one that's going to have to read them, not me. And if you have any questions, make sure that you um, uh, come to virtual office hours. If you can't make any of the virtual office hours, by all means, email me. I'm happy to help you. So hope to see you next time. Until then, take care.